right, what's up folks? Welcome back. Today, we're gonna bring you a special setup and design utilizing almost 100% of Viking Engineering's parts. And so he created a new setup, uh, an actual lower and upper receiver that works with all the Goat Guns parts. This is Viking right here. So I went ahead and ordered one. And man, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm kind of blown away. So this is the set. Now it is 3D printed, so it's lighter weight, like, uh, you know, plastic versus the all metal Goat Gun. So when it comes to durability, obviously the Goat Gun's gonna be it, but if you wanna get creative, this is amazing. I would love to see Go Guns create a uh, set like this, but this is beautiful. Still have some uh, Paul Heinz suppressors that are probably going to go into this mix, but this isn't even what I'm excited about. So <clears throat> Viking was able to do a special project for me, and so we're going to be doing this video with this setup. So he ended up making a Gun Ink Design custom upper and lower set. So this is what we're going to do our design with. And I'll get to the design later on, but I just figured I would go over kind of the parts that we're gonna use. We may use this handguard. This is the new handguard that he sent me. I also have some M-Lock styles in here. Um, I haven't decided if I wanna do a pistol style or a full length. Um, I've done a couple of pistols now, so maybe it's time for a full length. I don't know, but we got these suppressors that nestle in here so pretty. I may just have to see. Um, I do, however, have also some uh, full length cut barrels. And these are all from, also some from um, Paul Hine. So the same place the suppressors came from. So we may be using those with the full length. So I have a few parts there that we're going to use, but um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. They're fully set up, so you're going to be able to utilize all of your Goat Guns hardware with here. You got your dust cover will go in there. All these parts are going to go. Um, grip is going to go on here and probably going to use one of the custom grips. But I mean, it's just it's wow. This is impressive. I got to tell you. So we're going to have a little fun with this. We're going to make something cool. Stick with me. Here we go. All right, so I think I have the build that I'm going to go with. Now, this is just mopped up here. Um, see if it didn't fall apart while I pick it up. So, basically, I think we're going to go with the Viking upper and lower. I'm going to use the gun ink one. I'm just mocking everything up now. Um, we're going to use the Viking shorty here. We've got the Paul Hine suppressor that pops right out beautifully. I'm going to go with the ACOG, um, the Magpul style grip and mag, and then same thing with the adjustable stock. So we're gonna create a little SBR action here. Um, in case you're wondering, you can go to Viking's website. Uh, let's see, here we go. So Viking Engineering and Design.com. Uh, you can get his stuff on there. If you have questions, you can ask him as well. But um, you can also chat with him and connect with him in the Go Guns Addicts group. But it's a bunch of different kinds of handguards you can get which are, are really great i mean these things are amazing and they're they're not like super brittle um that you would expect from the 3d world they're not metal so you can you could physically break it but check the detail in there sorry about my hands i got acetone on them so they're dry 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 anyway um and of course we showed this so then i also have um some little mini triggers that I'm going to try and see if they'll fit in here. Here we go right here. Uh, we'll try right now. I don't know. These triggers are from uh, Raymond in the group and they look really cool, but I haven't tried because he has a slightly different setup. So to get these to go in, I might have to modify this setup so i haven't figured that part out just yet for the goat guns trigger it should fit in there it's got a little spring um, indention in there to hold the spring in place um just have to see how that works because that i have not tried just yet 
but that'll be part of our adventure. Anyway, here we go. Follow along. We'll do something cool. Okay, so we've broken down the upper and lower for both Vikings set and the Gokun set. And we're going to be, typically I would just move the trigger over, but since I got this trigger from Ray in the Gokun's Attic group, we're going to drop it in. So earlier I was trying to figure out like, how do, how do I get a trigger in here? Because this has this little box in here, the way that he's designed it. And I thought it was mounted in there to make it stronger or something. Cause I'm clearly an idiot because it actually just comes out. Um, so this design is actually pretty brilliant. So basically inside of here, let's put them side by side inside of the metal one. You can see the screw boss down in there where it holds it and the plastic one. I think he understood that if you put a screw boss in there, it may not be strong enough. Plus he's got a reinforcement right there, which helps a lot. So pretty smart on the design concept. So all we're going to be doing is we don't need all the extra parts. We just need the spring. We're going to transfer our spring over to this guy. Try to get it to stay in place. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> you just need to get the um, hinge part down in and the spring down in and you're set like that. So the, the little hinge, let me get it focused here. The hinge part goes on this side, spring goes on that side. And then you get this has a little indention on the bottom. Slides right in there like that. And then when you put your upper on, it holds the whole thing together. And you get this sweet ass flat trigger like that. So pretty dope. That's gonna end up being a nice piece there. So just wanted to show you how that works. I don't need the rest of that. So we're gonna get ready, getting ready for uh, for paint here. If you watched one of my previous videos, you've seen some disassembly stuff. I just wanted to point out when you go to take this thing apart, there's a part that um, gets some folks and that's the part that you have a knurled edge right there, if you can see that, on one end of the pin that holds the lever in. So it's important that from the left side, you try to push it out because you want that knurled edge to come out because if you try to push it out the other way, you can hammer it out. Um, but what may end up happening is you may end up um, breaking one of these clips. Man, I'm sorry, the focus up close is terrible. Um, you may end up breaking one side. So you just want to try to be careful. If you tap it out and you realize you don't have the knurled end coming out, very gently tap it back in, make sure you get it out so it goes the right way. But that's it, because if you break one of these pieces, it gets rough. And then um, these parts are simple. This is all held in with spring tension. So you have to just tap this piece out as well. That just uses the little... Um... Now for me, I often will use one of these to get in these tiny, tiny ones. But for this one, I actually have a pin that's small enough for it. So that's that. And the other piece I wanted to show you is we're just going to take apart the ACOG. Um, they're, you know, pretty straightforward. And if you've ever taken these apart, you may already know that these pieces come out because I don't paint them with those in. And you really just set them right here. And with the soft end, I just tap it right up. And these come out because they don't get painted typically. All right, now there's a lens in here. So there's a couple ways you can go about it. If you're nervous, I made these little um, these little things like this, different sizes. I just put tape around them until they fit where the hole that I want. And it slides down just inside that inner hole so I can still try to get paint up in there. But it is a bit more challenging and you never get the look that you're wanting. So uh, I have a vise, but I'm gonna try it right here. These parts are usually glued in. So with my soft hammer, I'm just gonna try and tap it back and forth. It's a whole lot easier in the vise, but there you go. So we broke that out and it's usually just held in. It's got a little uh, section right there that pushes in. So it only goes in that one way. Um, and then we have the lens in there and the lens you just have to push out um, nice and nice and easy. 
these things. You can put the lens back in if you want. This lens is very curved compared to some of the newer lenses. It looks very much like a contact. Um, so the easiest way I found to track these, let's take a little bit of tape. And just tape it to one of my part bags like that so I can keep up with it. That way I can just pop it off later. Um, static is your enemy with these. They stick to your hands like crazy. So that's it. Now that's, this is I can paint. Um, there's really not a lot on here. You can try and tape stuff off, but man, this one's difficult. So the only thing I typically do is if I'm going to get some, um, variation in color to give it a more unique look, I'll paint this part and this part separately. And then sometimes I'll try to tape off this extra piece here. And that's, if you didn't know, that's just an extra sight. That's just like an iron sight. You can, you can iron sight it right there. Um, so I could try to tape that off and paint it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this one, I think we're going to go with like a, an OD green and then we're going to add some color accents just to give it a little bit of a call of duty feel or something like that. Something to make it fun and unique. And then once it's all put together, maybe we'll do a giveaway. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. Either way, going to put these in the blast cabinet. Now, blasting metal and blasting plastic, very different. So if you don't use a blast cabinet, you just want to strip them and you strip these, this stuff right here, you're really just going to want to lightly scuff it. It's probably going to take your paint pretty well as it sits. But if you have something with these kind of designs, like if you got this Viking right here and you're spray painting this with heavy spray paint, it's going to completely fill all these little details. So if you're going to use spray paint, regular spray paint, you have to do very, very light, multiple passes. Unfortunately, the atomization on spray paint typically is not very good and it's hard to keep those details. So I would recommend like the uh, Tamiya spray paint where it has a really fine mist, something like that, or of course an airbrush if you're going to start getting into the details. Um, anyway, so there you go. We're ready. Going to start getting all this prepped, paint stripped, ready for paint, and then we'll start going through the process there. Deuces. So I want to show you just a couple of things after they've been blasted. So this is the 3D printed part. And really all you're going to notice is that it's completely matte now. All the shine and everything's taken off of it. This is the, what well, was like super polished part. It's actually just been blasted. And then this is of course the go gun aluminum part. So you can see kind of what they look like. And then if you've watching my videos, you see that I use these little guys. These things are amazing. I love them. They make it so much easier to hold your parts. Um, and then there's our little, our little trigger. And yeah, so we're getting ready to go. This is going to be the base coat. I was going to do OD, but I'm going to go with a little bit brighter green to give it a little more of a pop. And then we're going to be dirtying it up. So uh, probably some orange and maybe even some white accents. But we'll see where we go from there. Stick with me. I'll bring you in as I go. Okay, so we're green. So this isn't too terribly different than an OD green. Um, it's a, just a little bit brighter. And I think that'll help with the kind of look we're going for. And when I hit this with black and rub it, it's going to darken it anyway. But there you go. That's our piece. And you can see um, it's hard to tell the difference. Like this kind of 3D printing that he does, there's not a lot of major lines in there. You can see some minor variations here and there, and I would worry about like here, you can see minor variations. So if you were worried about that and need a smoother coat, you would want to let this dry and then maybe go back 
and very, very lightly, maybe even with some steel wool, rub that to get the uh, texture the same and then hit it again with paint. Um, but because I'm gonna be adding the stressing and whatnot, that's gonna disappear completely, so I'm not worried about that at this time on this model. Um, but there you go, that's the basics. This will be uh, two different colors, and now it's just a matter to figure out where I want to add the color. Um, so that'll be the next step. We'll go from there. I may do color fill on these little octagons. They're very shallow, uh, and I may lose my mind trying to do it, but we'll see how that goes. Probably going to do like a section back here in orange. Um, and then I don't know, maybe like a large icon logo or just doing some orange sections. I'll have to play around with that. It's really small. So what you can do of course, is a bit limited. Um, and I love doing the grip wrap, so I'll likely do a matching grip wrap on this and break it up a little bit, and then we'll have um, the other accent colors thrown in there, and we're on our way. Here we go. All right, first layer, I'm gonna throw in some orange. Everywhere that you see green, obviously, is where I'm gonna be painting. I was gonna do a bigger section on here, but I think I'm just gonna do an orange strip and then I might do some sort of numbers or something across the top there. And then we're gonna do just a little orange accent across the bottom here. And then I'm gonna do the front quarter of this in orange. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I was gonna to try to do these little octagons. This is tough, they're very shallow. So typically what I'll do is um, tape off the majority and then I'll spray in there and once it's mostly dried i'll go back with acetone and i'll try to wipe off the orange off of the raised sections it's hard to do when it's this shallow so we'll see how it goes if it really sucks then probably what i'll do is take this back apart redo it green and then i'll do some lines or stripes or something to match up with this we'll see how it goes we're gonna try it not a big deal if it doesn't work but hey we're pushing the limits today and we're gonna be using pumpkin orange all right, so everything's got some orange on it. I'm gonna tape all the tape off of that. Um, starting the taping for this piece, we're gonna do this one in white. But before you do all that, you gotta get ready. This stuff has to dry and cure. It's been drying for, I don't know, an hour or so. So I can handle this kind of paint, but um, Regular paint usually has to dry a lot longer than that, and I can't, I have to be gentle with it because it's still soft. So here's the interesting thing is <clears throat> I'm gonna try and use some acetone on this honeycomb, but I wanna let it dry as long as I can and still be able to rub it off because the green has been drying for a couple of days. And that's only because on these 3D printed parts, I can't bake them, that is bad. <laughs> So there you go. So we'll probably do a little orange wrap around that and it'll tie all that together nicely. Um, so, but look at this honeycomb. Just peel all this off. You get an idea of why I did it this way, I hope, anyway. So ultimately the extra taping is just so that I don't have unnecessary amounts of orange all over the place and I, uh, I use this thick piece here to block it off because I don't want the extra orange going inside because, you know, I'm weird that way. It just keeps it a little cleaner finish. So probably gonna set myself an alarm. It's right around 9.30. I set myself an alarm uh, maybe around midnight or so uh, and I'll come down and I'll hit this with some acetone because I'm, like I said before it's really shallow and if I get down inside the grooves at all the acetone will just take it right off plus because it's really shallow I've got to find a way to make it make whatever I'm cleaning this with off with has to be completely flat because if it has any um, texture to it or sometimes on larger pieces I use cotton swab but if I use a cotton swab and go in there I'll almost 100% wipe it away so I'll have to play around with that 
Anyway, I'll take all this apart, come back, show you what I've got so far, and then we'll be moving to the next step. All right, I'm gonna try this a little bit differently than usual because, like I said, the, um, the stuff is so thin. What I'm trying to do is just get a little acetone on here so it's not thick. And then that's what I'm after right there. So if I can get it to just do that on all the sections, it doesn't even have to be perfect to get that look for it. And that's pretty much what we're after. No, it's very hard when it's really this small, but just remembering that I'm gonna come back with black and dirty it all up and all that kind of stuff. So, but that's it right there, folks. That's the look I'm going for. So I'll continue on this and try to get it finished up. We have taped off all the areas to do some white accents. So I'm going to be making them kind of random. So like on this one, just a little corn piece. This is the part on the optic that we discussed before. Just little spots here and there. I am going to attempt to color fill the Gun Ink Designs logo here and here. Um, and then just a couple of little chevron accents and then a couple of little white fill accents. Again, that's for the optic. So we're just gonna go in and throw some white accents in. And then I'll try to do this color fill piece, rub that out and hopefully that turns out okay. Once that's done, I am then ready to move on to distressing. So we'll just go ahead and everything will get some black sprayed on it. And we're going to rub it, rub it down and do the typical distressing that I usually do. Um, and then I think from there, I think it'll be time to reveal and start the assembly process. So hang tight, get this knocked out, and then we'll see what that looks like. All right, we got everything painted it's been sitting about an hour and in this case nice easy coat so I don't even want to worry about going super thick or anything I'm just filling the spots because once you distress it and you put in the dark color on top it changes everything so if this was uh, say a full-size gun or something like that you might make some of these coats a little thicker but I'm trying to keep them as thin as possible. So we're gonna just untape this stuff, give you a little quick reveal of what this looks like. So these are actually not too bad. That tape is very strong. So this doesn't look too bad as it sits, but if you look closely, you'll see where it overlaps the outer edge. So we're gonna be working on that. So. Now, what, depending on what paint you're working on, it will depend on how you go about this, as always. But for me, all I'm doing is I'm using the a little bit of acetone. And I'm coming to wipe off that excess. So it gives me a very clean outer edge. And just like that. Now you have a finished look. I'll do the same thing on this side. And then we've got these, which we're trying to color fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the tape and then we'll take a look at what we've got and we'll work on seeing if we can make this color fill look finished. Tape is removed. Get an idea of what we got going on here. Just gonna play off of the hex guns up front. Just a couple little details when these are all put together. The idea is to be to kind of break things up a little bit and then you tie all your pieces together. So you have little bits and pieces in there. Um, <clears throat> uh, completely unnecessary chevron, but I like that it just added a little accent. We got our accent on our optic, which will then get this front piece like this and You'll see you have a little bit of overspray where the taping is because it's so hard. So we're going to clean that up a little bit. And then my focus right now is going to be to try and get this color fill done. This color fill, because the holes are so small, you see that better? Yeah, holes are so small. 
I'm gonna try it with this paper towel because that's the fastest way. Let's take off a little of the excess. And then we're gonna see, just like that. Get in here and clean that up. That's gonna get some stressing in there. That'll be good. And there you go, there's your color fill. Now I've done that with uh, droppers and um, you have these really cool little um, paint droppers, which are awesome. You can get them on like Amazon or whatnot. Um, this stuff gets a little bit more challenging because the space is bigger inside. So it's easier to wipe it away by accident. Just takes a little practice. Get the main stuff out with this. And again, ensuring your base coat is very cured is the super, super important. So that you don't trash it. So you can get an idea where we're going there. We're going to use a quick overwipe with this. You got to be careful not to get down in there too much. And there you go, there's the logo. Cool, so this actually makes it a little easier for me because I know I'm going back and distressing it. So if there's a tiny little spot that I'm not a super fan of, I know that once I go back over it, it'll clean and hide any little imperfection that I don't typically like. And it kind of just adds to the look a little, which is good. This is good because this is hard. This is really hard. Yeah, see, I just got a little extra piece that I off there, but that's okay because it's going to play right into the look that we want. And if you haven't already looked, you'll notice that these two sections are not centered on the actual optic itself, which is kind of funny. But that's about it, folks. For uh, the next step, is I got to let this all cure completely. Yeah, I wanted to level that out. Yeah, that's a little looks a little more even there. Um, this is all going to cure now once this is fully cured, which will be tomorrow really, because I can't do anything with these plastic parts until they're done. We'll go back and we'll start doing the, the black. So this will give us a little white on both sides. I'll do a little quick mock up here and see what we got going on. There we go. You got your optic. Is that let's see if we like it do we like it do we like the direction this is going yeah, yeah 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 i think so i think we're feeling it welcome to the distressing session okay so in this case i sprayed these under a minute ago now the paint that i use like i said it dries to the touch pretty fast so this is a, a little bit heavier than i usually go because I want this to really rub in and give me dark corners. Sometimes I'll go just a little light, get a little distressing, but ultimately for me, acetone. For you, it may be water or um, a thinner maybe. So I'm just gonna be going through here. I wanna leave a fair amount of distressing on this one. And so rather than rubbing the whole thing, I will do a little bit more of a blotting technique and as I'm done I just want it to look heavily used you just go back and figure out where you want to remove the stuff once the <clears throat> paper towel starts to get pretty dirty you start you flip it twist it move it around get a different one um, acetone because it dries so fast you have to work in patches. So I work in a section, I get in there and I take out what I want. Take it all down in there and I'm working on just dirtying all that up, taking it out, leaving it in the corners. <clears throat> and then before I move on, go back and work it out. The idea here is I want this to be a heavily battle-worn looking 
piece. You can always take some off. And if you feel like you've taken too much off, you can actually go back and just lightly spray a little bit more. And you get the look you're, for, you're after. Yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and get the uh, trigger installed. I wanna get this in all the way. See how this goes. This little block, it looks like it goes down this way. So that fits in there and that allows our trigger to work beautifully. Cool. Folks, I cannot reiterate how insanely precise this 3D print is. It, it just blows my mind. As I'm putting this together and I've put together so many goat guns, I just can't help but think about like, man, this is insane. Um, to be able to get it this precise and so far it's been really durable so i'm going to recommend you go check out viking which i would recommend anyway because this stuff is crazy cool but um i if you haven't seen i did one where there's a stock or actually a brace that he makes um and it is beautiful i had so ordered another one of those for a star wars build i'm about to do um but the precision on this is wild. Now, the one thing I'll tell you, it's 3D print. So you already need to be careful on, uh, on the die cast stuff that Goat Guns provides. But it's pretty solid. I mean, I'm, I think it's, it's more solid than I would have anticipated. But I don't know why I would expect anything less from Viking. He does, he does really good work. The thing that's really interesting and, and different about his work and what he does and why when you go buy a part from him, you're going to pay more than you might pay from another person is that he does all of his files from scratch files. And he does that so that the scaling and the fit is exactly what needs to happen to work with a go gun. Which is why I'm able to take all of these Go Gun parts and assemble this build flawlessly with his 3D printed parts. Uh, and so the marriage between Go Guns and keeping it true to Go Guns and Go Guns scaling and allow you to really enjoy the mixing and the matching of parts and just having a good time with it, that's what, what it's all about. So I uh, highly recommend. And I think this actually goes on smoother than it does on my go gun slower. So let's get this assembly going here. There we go. The magazine fits in beautifully, comes out beautifully. Mind blowing. There's your little trigger. Cool. So now the, uh, look what I forgot to put in. All right, we'll go back and add that. Happens all the time. I'm gonna get this barrel and handguard installed. So this piece is going to go on like so. And now I know that um, this is an area you want to be really careful because this is very thin. There's not really another way to do it. And he does recommend being careful here because it is brittle. And then he, these are, these are the screws that he's actually providing. You can use your traditional um, go gun screw for a barrel, but... I don't like this screwdriver there. Let's do this one. Uh, this one is good. It's flat. It's got a nice large head on it, so it helps reduce the cracking, I think is probably what that's all about. Let's see how this goes on. See, even in here, he has a notch cut out so that it fits around that smoothly. Folks, yeah. You know what, though? I'm going to use a black one of these. It's going to look better with a black one because I didn't even consider the fact that I'll be able to see that. So we're going to switch that out for a black one. Well, let's go ahead and complete our assembly here. Normally, you'd put two screws in the bottom, these two screws. But right now, I just want to get this put together so you can see the finished product. I'll switch that out for black. It'll look better. Let's get that Paul Hines suppressor on that sits right in there like that. And then... Put this on. That's probably... Let's see where my... 
relief is gonna be right there. So we're gonna set it right there. Get this guy to snap into place for us. There you go. What do we think? Completed, a little bit different, something, just wanted to have a good time with it. Mixing in the greens, the orange with accents of white. We like the white. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to the Viking Engineering upper lower receiver hand guard. These parts are amazing. Check them out. This one is going to go for a giveaway only on the Goat Guns Addicts page.